Hello, everybody. If there's anybody here, not yet. That's okay. Now, you know okay, what, I was, what, what I was thinking is until they get here, you know, I can put the news on and just have it scroll by. So as the one or two people get here, there's something to look at as we're just BSing. That's and a good as, idea. As soon as you're ready, just let me know and we'll pop the news off. Where All is, right. Let's do uh, it. Let's have some chatter about the market today. I'm looking for my, uh, where, where did it go? <laughs> it's okay. Oh my God. I closed it. Where? It's okay, John. You go ahead, pull it back up. I'm sure I can talk about some stuff. Yeah, let, we, had, let me... we had a pretty good day in the market today, you guys. Um, so I'll just go ahead and kind of go over market sentiment and what's happening and what has we happened. Still, we were watching the spy. That's all right. I'm just, I'm just discussing. But uh, we were watching the spy today. You know, just trying to see. Kept bouncing on that 378 area and it kept hitting it, coming down, coming down. And it did give back a little bit today, but it held the 373 important, you know, really support right there that we've been, we waited for it to break out over. And now it held it, came back up and made a newer high. So that is excellent. The market seems to be doing okay right now, considering the conditions. We are you already. Your screen, hun, go ahead. I'm all set up. So are you got... do you have any news rolling? Or are you good? Oh, I can roll it unless you got some. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. We got one person here. We waiting. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Let me get that up then. We got some news here for you folks. You can keep up with this. Uh, let's see here. We will go my entire screen. Hello, Snookaroo. How you doing? All right. There we go. Um, oh, heck. I got to open this all the way up. There you go. So you can go ahead and talk on because I know you've got places to go, don't you? Yes, you guys. I have to let y'all know that I do have a, a meeting I have to get to because we're getting ready to do an open house within the Penny Boys Discord. Mm, yeah. mm, 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 PB. So we're going to do an open house on Monday, you guys. And if I can, before I leave, I'll drop the links for y'all. But um, we're going to open everything up. So I've got a huge meeting today. So I'll be here for a little while and we're going to go over... Uh, just a few things that I was noticing today in the market. Market sentiment's looking good today. So glad Snookaroo's here with us. John's pulled up some awesome news here. So y'all take a look at that. And we're going to look at a couple of things that Lily's been watching. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll move on and let John take it over, you guys. So I know you're going to miss me, and I'm so sorry. But I'll be back. Um, give me a couple of weeks, because next week I won't be here either. Oh, we will Snookaroo have... A <laughs> Snookaroo told me to have a great time. I will have a great time planning for you guys' yeah. future. Yes. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about us. Don't even think about <laughs> us. You know, go out there, enjoy life, and take all yeah. you can get from it. We'll I like doing here. these. I do. I like doing these. So, you know, I'll be I'll be here for a little while, and then to next week I'll miss it, and I'll be sad, but I'll be thinking about you guys, and I'll be back. Okay. Me and John, the, the original OGs of OTC and the penny stocks, will We'll come back and keep it real with y'all. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. John, what kind of news we got here? Something really great you want to point out? With the news on the screen, you mean? Yeah. This Anything is stuff through, through the week, through the day. This is stuff I've picked up. It's just like, it's not a feed I've brought in. This is all hand-picked news. News that I think you should be aware of. Deals that are being made. Things that will have stocks moving. That's the bottom line. This is news that should have stocks moving. And, you know... What you need is a lead. You may not have as much time to search around the internet and find all this stuff. So if you can come to one place and get it, I put it in my videos daily. I've added this. So if you're looking for a place to see what good news came out today, I make one of these each day and put it in my video. And I figured I might as well throw it up here. It's only about three minutes long, but you get about 50, 60, 70 pieces of news that are hot right now. And that's good leads, so that is good leads. And uh, yeah. Jay, JG said that uh, he said hi to both of us. And it seems like OTCs have picked up some. And you're absolutely right. Me and John were just talking about it that. Is. The volume has definitely picked up, you guys. Yeah, we haven't looked at the volume. We will go check that out. Um, we hit over 16 billion yesterday. When I made my video, I had refreshed my OTC screen, and we were only over 15. 
This morning when I woke up, it was at 16.2 billion. Folks, we ain't been there for months. I mean, a long time. And the big deal is that we have been climbing back up day after day after day after day. And we have not done that at all for, geez, 15, 16 months. So That's I'm right. excited. That volume is going to get us off the bed and out of this coma. Me too. I'm actually thinking that maybe, you know, we've kind of found our bottom when it comes to that. So. And even if we go a little sideways for a little while, I'll take it. But I'm hoping that the, you know, the OTC season starts kicking back in. That'll be really nice. Anyway, John, thank you for sharing the news and the little tidbits, you guys. Y'all can always rewind if you need to to get that. Yep. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. I'm going to bring this down then. Let's go. Over here and Lots of jumping around, but there you go, and it's all yours. Hey, that's what happens when you're using these these uh, platforms to get the information out to the people. Yeah, we got to <laughs> jump from screen to screen to screen. It's a it's a screen to screen. All right, can you see my charts? <clears throat> you we sure can. You're okay, so this right hey, here is. Hey, I'm just going to touch on it real quick, just because we're talking about the market and how we're doing right now. This right here is the VIX, and this is just you know your one minute. So we're going to take it back a little bit. Your 20 day. Right here, your VIX. Um, when it's down here in these levels, you see that? This is a good time for swing trading, you guys. So, you know, when we're under like 25, 24 range, this is more of a steady and people are feeling more comfortable. So this is where, if I'm interested in holding longer, this is where I do it in these levels. Now, we did spike up to 35. Lots of uh, volatility and fear index. That's pretty much what it is, the fear index. So we're coming down. You see how that's happening? We're holding right here, but 20, you know, 28, 29 is about where we stayed at today. So not too bad. And so you see the market kind of picking up. And of course, we talked over the SPY and what it did. It made a newer high today for, for more recent, I guess you'd say. All mm -hmm. right. So we're going to go into the charts. First, we're going to talk about Revlon, you guys. Yeah. All right. So we're still on our 20 day. You see where Revlon went down to $1.08. And that was our bankruptcy news. Um, and that was the low for Revlon, but you know, it's really been beaten down over the past few years. So, you know, bankruptcy news, that's never, never gives me the warm and fuzzies, but as you can see, you had volume, you had people jump into this play and a lot of it. So when we got some news, I think it was around maybe the 15th or so of June, we got some news about them doing a reorganization. So what they're trying to do is, you know, get their debt out of the way. That's why they need the bankruptcy. But they're also trying to make it where they can get a hold of capital and get money and restructure. This is a good thing. So this is why you see Revlon doing what it's done here lately. I'm going to go over the next five day. You see, I mean, it's just a beautiful move that it's had. Now we're starting to taper back down. We need to see if it's going to hold these levels, you guys. So for me, it definitely has to hold in 475 and higher. And that's where I would like to see it pull back to, but we may stay around this range for a while. So this is a dip range right here around the 650s, the 658. That's a good dip for Revlon at this point, but that's a short-term play for me. If it decides to come back down and retest and hold this four, 450 to a four to a five level, then I might would uh, look at to play it for short-term. You don't want to stay in plays like this because they may have to do offerings and stuff like that to get all this restructuring done. So still keep it on your short term, just quick plays, getting some profits there and taking those profits because you never know what they'll have to do to make this happen. But it is a big name. Um, there's already companies that's looking at it to possibly buy if they need to. So Revlon's not going anywhere, not in my opinion. So it's kind of like how it happened with Hertz, John. No, you remember it's a big that, right? Brand new name. It's a exactly. name. Exactly. How long? I mean, over 50 years. It of course, has, yeah. 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 So if they don't fix themselves, somebody right. will buy it and just and do their own thing. That's right. It's a US company. So I do like it. The name is pretty much all you need. And John, you remember what Hertz did a few years ago when they did their reorganization and stuff like that? Didn't they drop the OTC? I can't credit. remember. Yeah, did they they did, didn't they? OK, yep. yeah. And I, Revlon at these prices, you know, may not. But I mean, that could be part of it. We don't know yet. So that's why I'm telling you to keep it short term, but to keep an eye on it. And I think their deal will probably be finished around the beginning of July. You know what? I'm thinking about Redbox. Redbox and their deal with was it? That's a whole nother ball. With, with the chicken soup people. Yeah, let's go see Redbox real quick. 
Yeah, that's it. RDPX. So I, it was the chicken soup for the soul people or something like that, yeah. right? Okay, so this one's only valued when it comes to their deal, their offer, and what they're doing for shares and price. It's only valued like 50 to 70 cents a share. That gives you a lot of information whenever you are looking at it. And you have a 20 day here that spiked to 18 something dollars. <laughs> so let's calm down just a little bit, everybody. <laughs> it, it is a short squeeze play and that's what's happening. That's why they're playing it. But the value of it's 50 to 70 cents. So when that deal happens, which is right at the beginning of July, you've got a few more days. You may see more of a squeeze out of this one. As we proceed, I'll go to the five day. See right here, it's kind of coming down. And this right here may be the dip level, 867. Right. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. But you may get one more little play out of it before that news, you know, that that's all finalized. And then I do look for it to drop because of that, because it's only, you know, valued at 50 to 70 cents a share right now with the, the terms they have for that agreement, okay? So just be aware of that. If you're playing these plays, these are more risky plays, okay, you guys? Yeah, the fact of the matter is there is a lot of activity and news, but there is a long road ahead of this company's recovery. Right. The company has to go through a lot of paperwork, a lot of management, a lot of restructuring finances. That takes time and people get bored waiting for growth and they'll That's move true. on. So this price will fall. So you've got to take the activity while the activity is here and That's then right. realize it's not going to keep growing. It'll be, geez, a year down the road. It'll be a little bit, but these are two but, good short-term plays. For sure. Yeah, but you can be able to pick this up once it gets lulled out. The price is going to fall, and you can pick this up really cheap, really cheap, pennies on the dollar, and just be patient. As Lily says, Revlon is going nowhere. They'll be oh, back. Yeah. Always come back. So be patient with this. If you've missed the run here, if you've got patience, I promise you, you'll catch it on the other end. If you get yourself a low buy-in, what, three, four, five months from now, it'll be stupid. Yeah, what? I would, I would look at it, especially with the market and what it's doing. And after they get, just keep an eye on that news and the type of restructuring they're doing. And uh, you'll see where a good place to get in. Right now, totally short term. Um, Revlon has that going with right. the restructuring. Redbox has the deal with chicken noodle soup or Campbell, whoever that soup place is. No, it's chicken, it's chicken <laughs> soup. Uh, it's for the soul, right? For, for the, the soul. soul. They started That's off right. as a book. They were the just a book. <laughs> but from what I read, the chicken soup for the soul owns lots of companies that are into media. And yes. Yes. from what I also understand, Redbox has a streaming service that they are starting up. They may be abandoning the boxes. Yes, you know? actually, Redbox does stream. I mean, I even have it on my TV, and we we had a subscription for my daughter a couple of years ago. And so that's what they're going to do. They're just going to roll them all up into one big package with yeah. chicken soup. But that's what I was saying. Like the offer that they've made them, and they're trying to you know do this deal with them. It's like fifty to seventy cents a share. So for Redbox to be sitting at what eight something or whatever right now, you can see that oh. we're just we're just doing the squeeze stuff here. I'll go back to it real quick. Right. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. But right. This is just, that. Yeah. This is just squeezed. This is what's happening. So we're looking at See, the I thought you were talking quick. about Revlon. Redbox. Is, I did talk about Redline, but I moved. Sorry. I didn't mean to do it too fast. So um, Redbox is only valued at 70, 57 cents. 50 to 70 cents from their, from the offer that they have with the, the, uh, oh, that's not good. The soul. Yes. So this is going to come down a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, usually stocks hold over their value. Okay. But um, 18 is a little crazy. <laughs> you know, that's a little much. And um, if we go wow. to five day, the more recent, we're kind of trending down. The 867 was a nice dip there. This could be a nice short term play. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning of July, I want to say July 1st or so, we got about well, like six or seven more days. Um, the beginning of July is when the deal goes through. I would not be in this at that time. Um, so just manage your risk. If you're going to play, this is a very risky play because it is a short squeeze potential, which it's already squeezed a lot. You guys don't think it's still going to keep just squeezing to the moon. <laughs> it already went to 18. So this right. Is just, That's if we see some continuation after it's gave back a little bit, because it is holding some of the gains. So keep an eye on this one. And the last one I want to talk about before I leave you guys, and I thought it was OTC, but it's not. This is um, on the NASDAQ, it's XXII. Look at this move that it's had this past five days. You know, we were $1.55 for our low, and we pegged out at 261 today. 
I'm going to get a little bit closer for you guys. You can see what happened through the day. Look at that. I mean, just beautiful movement. And I don't know where it's going to stop. I do know it's something about news and something about we don't have tobacco. But, you know, people want us because of our ability to replace the tobacco. I'm not even sure what's going on. But there's a little bit of chatter and a lot of hype on this one. So, But well, it's already they, moved uh, a lot. So just... Actually, the only news that has come out for this company is that they are supporting the federal proposal to require less nicotine be in cigarettes. And there that's what the whole product is for XXII, is a yes. cigarette with no nicotine. And if there's any, it's so little, they don't even count it as anything. I don't understand that. Is there a CBD replacement or, or hemp or something like that, John? Nope. Do you know? No, from I've looked at this company because this company started back in 2018 and they were into cannabis and then just swept away from it, started working on tobacco, said they could come up with a uh, alternative to nicotine cigarettes. And basically it was just a cigarette without nicotine in it. And I don't see any. I don't understand. Yeah. It's a cigarette that just doesn't have the nicotine in it. Which I but quit, why is that appealing though? You know? I quit smoking cigarettes to get away from the ash, the tar, the carcinogens, yeah. the, the ashtrays, the yeah. smoke, the stench. But I still get my nicotine from vapes. So mm -hmm. I don't know who wants to smoke. I don't just know. <laughs> if you remove the nicotine, then why would you want that nasty habit of just a cloud of smoke everywhere you go? I don't know. Either way, it's on it's on the move. The yeah, it is. seems to like it. Um, I would not touch it here. No, it's already moved too much, but keep it on your radar. I just wanted to bring yeah. it up to you guys because it was moving like this. And I did have a few more to talk about, but unfortunately I don't have any more time. But don't get me wrong, I am leaving you guys in great hands with the wizard. <laughs> so I hope you all appreciated what I had to, to bring to y'all today. I'll have you more do. in two weeks two weeks but um by that time you know revlon red box probably have already made those moves so just uh you know you know keep, uh normally when on top of it. leaving and coming back they don't come back i'm so coming I'm back be looking. I'm coming i'll be back. looking i got some planning to do and i got some other things coming up but i'm coming back but um i'll leave some stuff in the comments for you guys under this video so you can come to our open house if you'd like to yes um, and if you want to talk to me about those plays you can get to titan I'll leave one for that too. Our Titan server where John's at, uh, we're in there talking about OTCs and small cap plays all the time. Yeah, John has the best news. Yes. And we're following these things. So I'm going to leave all that for y'all because you know, you might miss me in two weeks. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good one. John, take it from here, sweetie. Love See you, you later. Bye. Take care. All right, folks, you've got me here. Now, um, you've already seen the news. There have been stocks. Let me get my window up here. Now, I'm going to have to jump back and forth, but I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Uh, let's just go full screen. And I'm not. I'm going to have to jump back to actually see your questions. Um, this is the best way to do it, believe it or not. So I'm going to presume that you guys can see my screen. <laughs> Beep twice if it's a yes. Um, we are looking at Sysex. Sysex was a huge runner today, folks. I mean, this thing, and it ran on news I didn't think it should really run on. This is their chart. This is the one hour, 20 day chart. She had a high back here of uh, just under a dime, and we had a low here of just over a penny. And today she jumped all the way up to 0 0.044, about four and a half cents, 225% gains today. Five hour chart, five minute. You can see big jump on the news sideways and she climbed all day. Wow, she did have a big drop here just at the very end of the day. That probably got in there at 4.05. Yeah, yeah, 4.05, last trade of the day. Somebody got scared and sold a lot. But in either case, this was the news. Let me come back over here. It was in a filing. Now, maybe there's something else, but I couldn't find anything else. Uh, they tell us in their 8K on March 30th, 2022nd, Cicerex on the 24th executed a head of terms deal with Ostendo Technologies. 
And the bottom line is the company is selling off 75% of its Ethereum mining assets and certain associated real property. They're getting out of the mining business for Ethereum. This is something that stocks really take off on when news comes out that they're getting into it. This stock has taken off because they're getting out of it. Now, if that's a telltale sign about what investors think about cryptocurrency right now, are they losing faith? Or is there something I don't realize here that they're going to do something with the money that they're getting? Uh, it is for uh, $68 million. So they are getting a chunk of cash. There is no doubt about that. Now, just to see what's going on, I don't want to abandon you people over here. So I want to jump over here every now and then and see. All right. So you guys can see me over there. All right. I can't hear anybody. <laughs> I got to leave this to actually go back over there. All right. So back on over there. So hearing that the company is getting out of the Ethereum business, had this thing running. Is it going to run any further? Well, that last sale, that pretty much said a lot about it, didn't it? That is a huge drop right there from uh, 0 0.043 down to who 0 0.032. That's like one fourth what one fourth 25 percent and it's coming down to a hard support that i had drawn in here uh we had other runners today um one that's not on this list but i do believe it's on this list right here is blue hat there it is blue hat today this was up over 300 percent yesterday it closed at 78 cents this is on the nasdaq this is a penny stock she had a jump right after market and then fell. Well, this jump would give you an indicator. If you look at the market before you go trading and see what's happened, you could see there was a lot of excitement here. Go see what's going on. I don't know when that news press came out, but it's one to watch because somebody got excited about it here. Well, once it hit the 200 here on the five minute, it launched itself and it climbed most of the day. There was a fall off and we've ended up with 263 percent and i think she was up to uh, 330 percent on her high and this is what the cause was as far as i could tell um they had news today wasn't it uh right there it is yeah actually it was news yesterday so it probably came out just at the end of the day which is why we saw that big jump uh, Blue Hat Interactive Entertainment Technology terminates its previously proposed shelf takedown offer. In other words, they were going to put more shares on the stock, a public offering with warrants, and just telling the people, no, we're not going to dilute the shares anymore. It took off. That's the news that got that over 300% today. So it's really tough to know what news is going to get any stock running. That's why truly looking at your technicals, looking at the chart, is more important than the news. I've overlooked news twice now. Yesterday was CMGR. Did you guys see CMGR yesterday? CMGR. Right there. She got up almost to a thousand percent. It was just over 900 percent gains. And this is a company that hires people with personalities, people who have influence, and that's what their business is influencing marketing and they brought on um oh kronowski i'm saying his name wrong he's a man who's been in the super bowl three or four times he's got a you know a strong track record as an athlete and a winner and psh, this company hires a lot of people you go look at their news there's lots and lots of people they bring on and normally i mean if we look at the four hour chart and you can't see it here but I want you to see it because there is a bounce for each person that they get. That ain't going to do it. I got to get my magnifier here. Bear with me. We'll zoom in just on that section. Spread it and zoom in one more time. All right. So you can see she has been on a downtrend, long downtrends, and then a big jump up to that 50. Downtrend jump. Each one of these jumps is when they hire somebody. Each one of these is, a, so their news is responsive, but that was a huge one. This was a big one. None of them jumped like that. And I read the news first thing in the morning. I post news around different Facebook sites, Twitter sometimes. I put information out there and I read it. And it's like, I don't follow sports. I'll give you that much. But maybe even if I did, I don't know if I would have saw the value of 800 plus percent coming from it. But there you go. 
So you never really know what's going to make a stock run. And that was half the day, and then it threw it all away. So don't get greedy, folks. When you see gains like this coming out of nowhere, climbing at incredible rates that make you nervous, for Pete's sake, take your money. No one says you have to sell it all. If you happen to get into this, you know, up here, you see it running and you get in here and it's running up here and you start to feel nervous. Well, maybe sell one fourth or half of what you got. Get back your money because you probably got over 100 percent gains there. When you go over 100 percent gains, you can sell 50 percent, get all your money back. And everything that's left out there is a free investment. I mean, you could lose it, but you've got your investment back. And if you sell another 25% as it goes up, that's all profit. That's all profit in your pocket. And now everything you've got is just extra bonus gain. And you can play with that. If you want to try to find the ceiling, take a small load up to the top of the mountain. Sell off as you're going up. Take your gains, decrease your risk, decrease that pressure inside. Take the money, folks. Don't be afraid to leave money on the table. And if you like the game, sell small pieces and Take that last 20, 25% and see if you can find the ceiling. If that's what you really are itching to do, then try it. See how good you can read the chart and then see how good you can get out. See if you can read the charts falling, that it's changed its mind, it's changed its trend. The education will do you good. Paper trading, yeah, that's good. But honestly, folks, they tell you to move your emotions out of trading. Well, that's the difference between paper trading and real trading is the emotion. Without the emotion, you're not going to paper trade the same way because that's only your brain. It's not your heart. And when you get the two together, there is a dilemma in many cases. So that's one way to practice. Sell off going up the climb, take a small load to the top and see what you can do. Uh, let me see what else I had here. Let me take a peek over there, see if anybody's got a question. Stock whiz math, always make happy here. Yeah, I get a lot of it wrong. I go back and say, oh, that wasn't. But I try to ballpark it just so you get an approximation of what sort of picture we're looking at. I know that's killing you there, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> that makes me sick too. Sorry. Uh, let me see. By the way, lots of snook here in Fleur D makes good deep fried fritters. Just saying. <laughs> Oh, don't. I haven't eaten yet. I haven't eaten yet at all. All right. I know I've got another stock over there. If you guys have any stocks you want me to look at, poke them up there. I mean, we can just look at the chart. We can see where it's going. If you want a heads up, if you're in something, uh, because I've got things uh, trading, surely a Zen challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. I think if uh, Zen master traded, he'd probably be pretty good at it. I think he would. All right. We're going to go over to... Uh, my windows again here, see if I can find another stock I'd found for you. Try to throw a few of them over here for you. This is another one that ran today, Pets. Now, let's see if I can remember why it ran. Uh, let's see what sort of share structure they had. Well, I don't know what their float is, but it's under $6 million, So it is a very low float. And it did run today. It's at 54% today, but I'm thinking it was higher. But I would still like to find the catalyst. It had calls. Um, I pointed it out to somebody today. And let's see. Filing 6K? No, I don't think it was no 6K. Uh, geez, uh, what's this? Uh-oh. TDH Holdings completed a reverse stock split for common shares at a rate of 1 for 20 on June 14th. All right, so looking at the chart on June 14th, we should see a big, huge spike for this, but that doesn't account for no spike today. That's not the same thing. Um, I know there was a reason for this. All right, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go ask for help. We're gonna go on over here to Twitter. I find lots of information over here on Twitter that is great for leads. Um, I used to be able to see court dockets. Court dockets is the first place to get information before it even makes it to a press release. And we can get information like that, but it does cost, or you can go to every single secretary of state and file with them and you can get information when you go to their website. Uh, let's see here. What were we looking up? We were looking up uh, pets, P-E-T-Z. It didn't just go pink or something, did it? Uh, the volume increased for two consecutive days, resulting in record-breaking volume, growth of 653%. That's nice. Uh, oh, right. 
Now, we didn't uh, talk about this yet, but Chinese stocks were running today. There were a lot of companies. Pets is a Chinese stock. Uh, Black Hat or Blue Hat, the one I just showed you, that is another Chinese stock. Um, because the Chinese have lifted their pressure off of public companies, technological companies, there has been a lot of growth in this. And as far as I can tell, the reason this is happening is because China is in a financial bind and these are money making companies. There's no reason to stop the revenue stream. So I think they're compromising. You know, you go to Alibaba, there's a lot of information on Alibaba. and That's what they're about, trying to keep this information private, not getting out of China. They don't want us to know anything. And when you go to Alibaba, they tell you about every factory over there, what city they're in, how many employees they have, how much business they do. There's a lot of information on Alibaba. But Alibaba was climbing today because that was one of the companies that was threatened. Well, all the Chinese companies that work with technology were threatened. And Black, Blue Hat definitely works with it. I can't remember what Pets does. I don't think it's Pets Supplies anymore, though it could be. It could be. I don't know. But that's the only thing I could find on this. When you go over here and look at that chart for pets, it was pretty. Yes, it was. Look at that, folks. Now, what was most interesting, obviously, is when it happened. It happened in the middle of the day. So you would expect there was a news press released or a filing just released or a tweet. Now, I didn't look at the times of those tweets. And you can. You want to do your due diligence. You can see. When this took off, you can see when the first pets tweet came out. It's easy to do by just going to the top instead of uh, latest instead of top. You can see the most current ones. And maybe, honestly, folks, it doesn't take a lot. Sometimes a simple tweet can catch a thousand people's attention and something can happen. So it happened very late in the day. That happened. She was at uh, almost one o'clock in the afternoon. Nothing. Just like all of this, nothing going on. Hit a low today. And I'm not going to call that the catalyst because a lot of time went by before it decided the ricochet. But it launched there from uh, oh, about $1.90 up to $3.73. She ended at 54% down here. But look, after market, she's still taking off. She's still climbing. And this is on the NASDAQ, folks. So we've got another penny stock. And this is what I like about penny stocks. There's a lot of volume because there's a lot of traders. There's a lot of people that trade out here. And you know what? They got money. So when they want to make a stock move, they can make it move. And these are free. You don't have to pay. I don't know what you're paying. Over at TD Ameritrade, it's virtually $7 to get in and $7 to get out. That's 14 bloody dollars I got to make. And when you're trading stocks that are 005, you know, to cover that and then make a profit, well, in this volatile market, it's not very safe. It's pretty risky. The other nice thing about it is, is when you buy a stock down here at, let's just say it's $2 and you say, I don't want to lose any more than 20% of my investment, which is very prudent. You should be doing that. You should be getting out of trades at some number. 20% should be the biggest, but whatever you choose. Well, when this falls 20%, I've got time to think about it. That's got lots of pennies to fall. What, what is that? 40 cents. That's got to fall 40 cents. But if you buy a sub penny stock at 005, all that's got to do is fall to four. 004 and you've lost 20%. Bingo. Just that quick. Your risk is very heavy down there. Yes, your profits are strong. But up here, you have time to decide and lose less money. Get out for free. If it isn't going right, get out for free and go into another one that's moving in the right direction for free, right? So this is a great thing about trading these penny stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. You can get in if it starts going the wrong way and you've lost $5 and you just say, oh, I knew it was going to do that. Well, sell. Get out at a $5 loss. Go find one that is moving the right direction. Get into that for free. It's easier to do. The OTC market that's a lot of money. Get in, get out, get in. Oh, now I'm up to what? $32? No, this is silly. So, no, okay, that was $21. But you get my drift. It adds up to the point to where you're losing track. So I really like trading the NASDAQ. All right, I'm coming back. See if anybody's got anything to say. <laughs> totally agree on $14 swing from OTC. Big drag. Here, you guys want to see that? There you go. There's a lot of deep fried fritters not available to eat. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in case you haven't noticed, folks, our volume has been picking back up. Let's jump back over there. We haven't been over to the OTC market to actually look at that. Uh, yesterday, we were at, oh, no, not no $2 billion. Let me refresh that. Oh, God, break my heart. Oh, boy, we fell. All right. Now, there is aftermarket activity. Now, you and I can't do the aftermarket or pre-market activity, but it's out there and it does constitute. So by 12 o'clock tonight, this will change again. And I noticed that yesterday because when I made my video, we were just over 15 billion, which excited me. We have been increasing every day for about 12 days now. I think it was Thursday two weeks ago, we hit 4.7 billion. And I was scared, folks. I mean, you know, how much blood can you lose before you go into a coma? So the OTC hit bottom maybe, and we have been climbing ever since. And this is the first pullback on volume. Every single day has been stronger from 4.7. Last Friday, we were at 10 billion. I think uh, the other day we were at 12 billion. Yesterday, 15. Today, we're at 9.6. That's a big drop. That's 30% drop in volume. We're also down on our dollar volume, which isn't a lot, except to say that it never moves hardly. It sticks at 2.1. This can be 50,000. This can be 5 billion. It doesn't matter. This just doesn't seem to move. It's moved. It's fallen. And our trades, that's pretty much the same. We're not really doing a lot more. But I am excited. I, a pullback, okay, it's fair. You know, everything has a pullback. We have been climbing. This is more than double what we were 12 days ago. So we are getting an increase right now. If we keep getting stocks like TXTM, which was the South African merger with, uh, well, we can't remember. You guys all remember. That was a big deal. It had a huge run, brought in, I think, 10,000 trades roughly in one week. 10,000 trades. And lots of money was made. And that's what people are looking for on the OTC. We need runners that draw people in, not just a bounce for one day. You really need some rippers. Now, the thing about the South African play, um, somebody here knows. I'm going to come back. I'm sure somebody's got that at the tip of their tongue. No, not Hyru. <laughs> Hello, Thebes one. I called you the best one last time, which has a nice ring to it. You got to say the best one. I thought you were playing a, a game with the T. Turn that one, that T into a one. But it is Thebes one. I got you now. Uh, anyways, that play uh, still has play left in it as far as I'm concerned. I'm just not sure which way the play is going to go simply because they haven't given us any numbers about this South African company, the cannabis company that wants to just launch the, their business. We don't know what they're worth. We know what the company that they are reverse merging is worth. So once they give us financials, that's going to make that a whole different ball game. Have we given it too much value? Is it going to fall? Or is their numbers bigger than we presume they are and there's more room to grow? Really don't know. We're going to have to watch for that news. All right. So what else did we have over here that had a lot of volume and had some gains? I've got this in, uh, yes, I do, gains. And I'm only looking at stuff that is in the millions. You know, you, you, you want to be impressed. What is catching people's attention? Millions of shares is going to catch people's attention. C-Bond here, uh, this is a true penny stock. This is just under three cents. And it had a climb here of 84% today. Again, we don't know what any of the catalyst is. But you look at this and you look at the uh, chart, right? And you say, well, is that going to continue to run? Well, without looking at the news, what would the chart tell us? I mean, that's really the important thing. Any stock you look at, you want to, it doesn't matter if the news is good. If the chart says it's going to go down, don't trust the news. Trust the chart. The chart is not made up. This is all mathematical algorithms displayed so that we can understand them and read them in whatever context we choose. <laughs> But looking at this right now, we hit a high. She had a pullback. She came back to her high and she started to fall. She broke her 10 here and is halfway down to the 20. Volume has been decreasing. You do have a climb on the MACD. She is sitting high on RSI, not in the overbought, but she is up in the upper 60s. And she is in the area of the upper bar here. So it looks like it could continue to grow. The SMAs are all looking really strong here. 
going in the right direction. The only thing we are concerned about truly is the volume. The volume makes a big difference. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a lot of volume for it to grow, but you've got to have volume coming in steady. And this is the other factor I concern myself with is the direction of the CCI. If it's pointing down, things are coming down. That's just the way it works. The, the other thing is, the uh, in case you didn't realize it, that line right there is the price. If you turn off the bars, take all your SMAs out of there and turn that into a line, that's what you'll see. It's just been made flat here and they put these lines top and bottom. So you want to see this always climbing because that's pushing the price up. If this falls, guaranteed the price is falling because they are one in the same. All right, I'm going to drive you crazy here. <laughs> I got to come back. <laughs> Mac DRSI CCI, any others you all like? You know, one I haven't been using, I'm going to turn this off so we don't go crazy. One I have not been using, but being in the Discord, I am, Penny Boys. I am with some top traders in there, folks. Really, some very heavy-duty traders that know how to read charts, that know technicals, that can read these trends, know these bounces, know the right times to get in and the right times to get out. And I get to listen to what they're talking about. And... Uh, Oh, geez. They use the VWAP. I don't use the VWAP. I am going to. I was watching some live streams that we have over there. We have lots of live streams, and I like to plug into them when I can find time. And they show I'm watching all my SMAs. I'm reading them properly, but I don't see the VWAP because I don't have it on my chart. And most of these stocks on the major exchanges respect that VWAP. People make decisions on calls and puts, on buys and sells, all based on where that price goes on that VWAP. I don't know enough about the VWAP. If any of you know about it, I'm gladly to learn. But I would say check into the VWAP because that sounds like a tool that is definitely important because people respect it. And that's what we're looking for. The tools we use are tools everybody uses. That's what makes them work one traffic signal for all of us. If you're looking at a 14 day and a 72 day and a 432 day, you may see signals. You may be able to catch things, but nobody else is looking at that signal. So when you go to run, nobody else is running. And when you go to stop, nobody else is stopping because nobody sees it. So if we all use the same signals, we see that 50 day SMA crossing the 200 day SMA coming up. We all see that. We're all on our buy buttons ready. Once we got confirmation, it is going in that direction. There's a lot of activity that picks up right there. That's why we call it a strong point. It's not that there's any magic in the chart. It's that we all respond to it like we're brainwashed or something or in knowledge. We know what happens, so we do what's expected. And that's really what this comes down to is probabilities. Nothing's guaranteed. But if you know something works six, seven, eight times out of ten, well, you're on the right side of the coin. You're winning more times than you're losing. There's nothing wrong with losing if you know how to get out fast enough and get into a play that's winning. Most people don't know that Warren Buffett gets out of four times as many plays as he wins because you make decisions and if things don't go right, don't panic. Don't worry about it. Change your decision. Make a better one. There's nothing wrong with that. The market is constantly changing. The numbers are constantly changing. You've got to flow with it. You've got to go with it. Jimmy Jean Baptist is Haiti connection on Twitter. Haven't got a clue what you mean, brother. <laughs> Haven't got a clue what you mean. I'm going to pull that down since I don't know what it means. I just don't know what to say about it. All right. Toss out a stock for me, folks. What are you looking at? What did you see running today that I didn't cover? Let's take a look at it right now. Come on. Looking for a dip in these TXTM, uh, Rama and Daddies, I can enter. All right, let's go back to TXTM because that was a top play. I do think that really helped the market. I got to share my screen again, don't I? I do. I remembered. <laughs> All right, so close your eyes. I got to make you dizzy here. Sorry. All right, there we go. All right, back to that chart, TXTM. Let's look at it full size. TXTM brought in a lot of excitement into the OTC. Do you realize one of those days she traded, she did 
one sixteenth of all the shares on the entire OTC market. Everything that was sold, this company got one sixteenth of all the shares. It was a very dominant play. People were definitely focused in on it. And let's just back up so we got a picture of what was going on. So you can see nobody was paying attention. Now, this was a reverse merger, TXTM uh, Pro, uh, what are they called? Protex Mobility. And then South African Cannabis Medicinal Marijuana Company came to them and wants to do a deal with them. And they're a bigger company from what I gather. I believe their revenues are stronger. And this took off from uh, 0022, just call it 22, up to uh, 200. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. From 0022 up to 02. So that is almost a thousand percent gains. And she has thrown a lot of it away. There was a lot of profit takers there. You can't blame them. Look how flat it was for so long. So is there an opportunity to get back in? Well, let's see if we go to the 20 day one hour. I'm going to get rid of all these lines. Not quite sure where they're sitting. First thing I want to do, because I do it, is throw in a top and bottom line. Just in our current situation, there's nothing in the past to really look at. So this is all we are going to focus in on. And I want to see how she stands on her center line, because even though there's not a actual defining point here where everything's jumping off, you do a mathematical. I'm just eyeballing this. You find the exact center here. And I, I assure you that is a support resistance on the chart. I guarantee you that line will come in where it is exact. I just spitballed that in there. And we look for this to sit on top of this at least for a strong gain. If it comes below, we expect it to fall. Now, I don't mean just underneath. I mean actually fall away from it. And this has started that fall. And she just kept falling. And right now we're on a one hour. So you're looking at the 200 down here. On the five minute though, where are we at? Well, there's our line, our 50% line. We are just underneath it. You can see, geez, it's virtually you. And I wasn't looking here, but you can see how it bounced off it right there. And you can see how it is the resistance right there. So it is, I got it pretty good there for a spitball, to be honest. And each one of these tall breaks like this, you can do that for any of them. Top and bottom, find the middle. That will become a point where it tries to come back to. It tries to always split the difference. It's always trying to find the middle, the perfect average. So this is right underneath the 50. She's had, so it means it's in a good position to buy. She's weak right now. Now, does she look like she's going to fall? Well, you got your 200 haul. I don't know how many of you use that. That's like this. 200 days of moving averages, averaged together. But it takes current affairs more into effect. So the line is normally a little closer. But people pay attention to it. I don't know a lot of people that use it. But I do find the price bouncing off of it. So others are using it. And right now, she is cutting across. Straight across from the 200 here, this purple blue one. And you can see in your mind how it's going to curve up over here. This is going straight across. And I expect that when this 200 comes down and this comes up, this price should flux up. Looks like our technicals are getting stronger. We just hit the signal line. We are in the 60s and we are pointed up on the CCI. <clears throat> now, I don't know the value of the stock. But talking for a trade, looking for a bounce, she looks like she's getting ready to do something to go up right now. She does look like she has been working her way back up to a strong point at this very, very moment. It's a coin toss. But I keep my eye on this. As soon as you see any volume start to bring in and be careful, you see here, right? We did have volume come in there. <laughs> Let me back that up. Sorry. We did have volume come in there, but it wasn't good volume. I mean, that's all sell volume. So just because you have a lot of volume come in, that does not necessarily mean you're going to get gains. You've got to look for how things are rolling. And in case your chart doesn't look like mine, before we close up here, I see we're getting close on time. I want you to see the reason my bars look so solid, so clean and crisp is because I am using the Heiken Ashi. I got a choice over here. There's your standard candle right there. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I use that for years and years. So why did I decide to use the Heikinashi? Well, you've got places like this, right? You've got dashes. 
And when I'm only seeing from this point back, I don't see everything forward. I have no clue what that dash means. Where is it going to go, up or down? Yeah, I start to read everything else, but it's not a lot of information. Then you've also got this stuff, green, red, green, red, back and forth, changing color. And it's like, boy, is it going up or is it going down? Well, I find with the hike in Ashi, it does something that helps. It keeps the trend solid color. So even if there's a green in the center here, if it isn't strong enough, it doesn't show up. Also, the other thing I like is that it starts to taper off the size of the bars when it's thinking about changing direction. So I get a hint of when things are going to change. This also makes it easier to draw patterns. If you're using your lines and you're looking for wedges, you're looking for channels, it's just a lot easier to see the top of everything that you're looking towards. So that's why I use them. So if yours looks a little bit different than mine, that's the reason why. All right, let me jump back on over here and see what you good folks are up to. <laughs> Stock values, that Lily mentioned, a good source for this info, WSJ, WSJ, that looks familiar, can't recall what that means. Um, RBSH, 82% today, why? RBSHA, we got time to look at that. I appreciate the question. Let's go take a look. Let me open up my share box here. Cover your eyes, folks. We got to do this one more time. Yowza. All right. Um, I got to do this one more time. I didn't get that ticker. Uh, that was, where'd it go? Where'd RBH go? <laughs> I thought we, oh, there it is. RBSH and Pooj. I see Pooj up there too. RBSH. Why did RBSH run? Rebus Holdings ran 41%, or at least that's how it finished. Let's see what it says over here. RBSH. All right, so she did run, uh, started picking up some momentum yesterday. Let's go see if we can find the catalyst for her. She got a small float. Does that help her move? Yes, yeah, she does have a small float. She's got under 10 million. So whatever activity she gets can be amplified. What is some news? Uh, no, not since 2017. Nothing here. Let's check our disclosures. We're not interested in their current filings unless they just brought out a financial filing. That, that would be the catalyst. Their latest, latest one was over a month ago, the quarterly report. So let's take this uh, ticker and let's go ask everybody on over here at Twitter. Maybe we can find something out there. These people know a lot of stuff. All right. No, SysX, we know why that ran. RBSH, nice slaps hitting. Um, do, do, do. Now, this could be one of those plays I was, I was telling you about. Tweets on Twitter actually matter. I am not lying to you folks. I have so often seen nothing but Twitter tweets about a stock's technicals, about how it's set up, how it's really a low float, although that's not always the case. Some people call a billion shares a low float. But if it's not diluted and all that stuff, and when everybody starts noticing it at the same time, when you see all the posts coming out on the same day, all of a sudden it starts running. Whoa, I and mean, you can't find any catalyst anywhere except there was a lot of buzz. And if you don't consider buzz a catalyst, you're missing a big part of trading. That is one of the things I particularly focus in on when I trade stocks or I'm looking for stocks to trade. I'm looking for buzz in a different way. I'm looking for trades. And they've got a page right here that I can focus in on advances for all the OTC stocks, every single one of them. And I can focus on whichever one has the most trades. That had 3,694 trades today. SysX, this is the one that got out of Ethereum. So 75% of the Ethereum that they were mining or the hardware that they used to mine it with. Well, what does that tell you? That's more than 100 people. That's more than 1,000 people. Most of these people are happy that they were getting out of crypto. So there's that message. At least that's what I presume. They moved 109 million shares generated $3.5 million. That's how much money was spent today buying all those shares, 225% gains. So whether the news looks relevant or not, you come over here and you see a stock that's starting to grow. Now that's the end of the day. 
But if you'd have come over here and seen 64 at 10 in the morning or 126, you know, bloody look, if it's already starting, why should it end? Once people start running to something, the crowd gets bigger and bigger and bigger, unless something impedes it, unless something breaks it. So I always love coming over here. Uh, UBQU. Now, I don't normally look at triple zeros because you can move a billion shares and not move. But that doesn't mean they didn't have good news today. There could be a reason people are investing in it today. 671 KRFG. All right, so someone wanted to see Pooj. I haven't looked at Pooj in quite a while. What, what do we got here? We've got a couple minutes. Pooj. Let me back this up. We're on 15 minutes right now. Let's see a four hour, six month. Now, was it a year ago I was looking at this? It's really hard to tell. Yes, I knew. See, Pooj was very hot for a while there. Pooj was running. You can see the volume was just incredible here. This started running on the 17th and hit its high on the 19th a month later. So you had a full month of climb on Pooj. Whoa, wouldn't you want to be a part of that? That started at uh, just, just about double zero two, roughly. And it went to almost... Well, 0 0.017. So you're looking at, uh, well, over a thousand percent, right? Yeah, just basically a thousand percent gains. And she gave it all away here. She has fallen way below that. She's now, what's that low? Zero. Zero. Let me come in on that. Can't be zero. No, the stock, ha it says zero. It absolutely does say zero there. Ah, that's not a good thing, is it? No, what's been going on with Pooj? Triple zero four, hit zero, came up. Now, what's the date here? That's the 21st, that's yesterday. And the 17th, yeah, that was Friday, 22nd. How do you hit zero and still be on the market? I mean, what you do is you go to, you know, well, if it's at triple zero four, you go to quadruple Four. I mean, I don't know, but you don't go to zero. Could you imagine buying it at zero? How much you want? <laughs> now, there's got to be a reason. So let's jump on over here and see if we can find what's up with Pooj. And then we'll call it a day, folks. Unless somebody asked something I didn't quite catch. Oh, well, there's your answer. What the heck happened to Pooj? Turn my back on it. She's on the expert market now, folks. Let's see if it's all about her disclosures. You normally get pulled off of the market, the open market. She's not delisted. That's just time out. It's not bad, bad, bad. It just means they're late. They're not filing on time. I mean, imagine what goes on when you don't file your taxes on time. Well, that's kind of the same thing here, and that's the punishment. You ain't going to be able to be on the open market. So let's see what we got here. Period end 4122. Okay. Oh, that's an 8K. No, 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 no. Oh, man, that ain't looking good. They got anything inactive over here? No. Oh, oh, we've got a serious problem here, folks. They've only got one. I don't see any. Okay, hold on. They've got something thrown in down here. We got a NT. All right, that's a 10K. That's your annual report financial. But an NT, you might as well think of as a not. It's their excuse form. Whatever it does, it doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be their reason for why they can't file. Because of the registrant's lack of funds during several years in the past, we're unable to comply with filing. And normally, uh, in these sort of things, you will see there is a five-day extra grace period. And in many cases, that's what they'll say up here. We can't make it on time, but we'll get it within the next five days. And darned off, the stock doesn't run. This NT10K comes out saying we're going to be late, but we will be not later than five days to stock starts running before the financials are even out. I don't know why that happens. So this one, um, they filed for being late, but that's all we've got here. I mean, let me see, that's 1021. So we're back to last year. We don't even have any filings for this year. So uh, Pooj looks in serious trouble. I don't know what their financials are right now. You could, oh, gee whiz, they got no financials to look at, do they? No, that's been the whole problem. They've not got anything listed here since 2014. 
Yeah, see, absolutely nothing. So we don't know anything about this company except all the news they told us. And that's what you get. I'm presuming this was a pink. That's what you get with a pink. A pink, it's all about the management. Everything else is second to the management because we don't get the audits. We don't get the backup. We don't get the reliability and the safetyness of being a QB or QX, NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange. The pink are risky. Risky as hell. We got to take the word for everything they tell us. All the news, all of the financials, you've got to take their word for it. That's why I'm always looking for these green ticks on these pinks. I know that the OTC has checked out a lot of information that is valid and important. And that's all been done. When I see a company that is gone here, well, I've got a concern. I got to consider that it's probably all BS. Whatever they were doing, there's no reason you can't put in one financial for the last quarter, at least for the last quarter. So we can see what's going on right now. They haven't got anything since 2015. That means they've got, what, seven years of financials to put in. You have to put them all in. And that means an annual too. So that's seven times 535. And because they're pink, they're going to need at least five uh, attorney letters and every single one of those cost money. Whether they have an, a CPA do it or not, it does cost them money. The attorney is going to cost them money. And if they don't have any money, how soon do you think it'll get done? So if you are into Pooj right now, you do have the right to sell. I see they've got no price here. The problem is, is that the price falls so bad on an expert market. Nobody wants to sell. You bought it way above triple zero one and the price is going to be way below triple zero one i mean you're going to be selling if you bought eight hundred dollars worth you'll be lucky if you get eight cents right and who wants to sell that so you're probably going to end up holding this and holding this and holding this until they either disappear or they come back on the market sorry to say all right i'm going to bounce back over here close your eyes <laughs> there we go Okay, boy, it's kind of tough with the one person here. I don't get to see what you're saying. I don't even know if you can actually see me. All right. BFR, I hit the button. Cool. My blank pile is RGGI minus 600 bucks. I keep it as a reminder to make sure I want to buy it. Oh, uh, yeah. Folks, there's a lot of stocks right now that are down. There's a lot of stocks and you could be averaging down, but don't abandon them all. Seriously, now's the time to do your DD. See which ones are garbage. I mean, if they're down, they're down. The chances of them coming back probably, if they haven't got good management, if there really isn't a backbone in the jellyfish, if you forgot why you bought it in the first place, I hate to say it, but it may be time to take that money and put it someplace you know is growing. I've got a lot of stocks that I've had for a long time. I've been doing that, looking at them, and I've been surprised to learn what I've learned. I just didn't realize it. So if you're holding these long holdals, maybe time to take the money and put it someplace else. All right, folks, what do we got here? John, what kind of work did you do before? I started off as a, well, Navy. The Navy was my first job at 17 years old. Coming out at 22, I went into construction, starting with roofing. Became a builder, building uh, homes for people. I then went into sales, selling cars, selling door to door. Then I moved on into, um, I guess you would say, online business. I started selling things online. Had an Amazon store for quite a few years. They shut me down about a year ago, and now I trade. Now I trade for a living. And boy, did I pick a hard time to do it. Woohoo! That's why I went and learned options, folks. Truly. I mean, even if you're into OTC, you can afford options. And if you stick with the simple side of options, you don't have to learn everything. Just learn how to buy a simple call and a simple put. There is some basic information that you can learn and handle. You can buy stocks that are expensive for just cheap money, 40, 50, 60 dollars, and make money today. If the market is falling, that's where your bet should be. The OTC has got some stocks going up, but they have no options. The other markets all have options. You don't have to 
put a lot of money into it, folks. You don't have to get risky. You can do it. And hey, come on over to Discord. We do everything over there. Day trade, swing trade, options, short stocks, cryptos, NFTs. We have experts in every single field. Lots of free information. We're not just premium. Yeah, we have premium. Of course we do. But we got lots of free stuff that is helping. So come on over. I invite you. Um, Lily invites you. Amy invites you. You got to get to know Amy. Amy is a professional trader. Boy, can she read a chart. I am learning so much from her. All right, folks, I'm a wee bit over now. I thank you for your time. Thanks for putting up with my bouncing back and forth. And uh, hope you didn't get tired of me doing all the talking. God, I miss Lily being here. I think we're going to have Nikki next week. Somebody else who knows stuff I don't know. I love it. Thank you, folks. It's been my pleasure. We'll be here next week, same time. And don't forget, Monday on Twitter Space, we'll get some information. I'll try to post it here all day, all day from start to finish. All that stuff I just said, we're going to have our experts out there talking to you. So I'm going to be there early. Everybody else will be there, one behind the other, and it's free. We want you to know what we're about. So come on over. We're waiting for you. See you, folks.